Going? Yeah, very good. From uh, <laughs> from the hills of Kashmir to the to the Thar Desert, we yeah, on traveler right. knows no bounds. <laughs> Bird's eye view. As we soar to 2,500 feet, the sun rises from behind the Arvali Mountains, illuminating rural Rajasthan's landscape. This is not the arid desert I expected. Neat fields dotted with trees, perfectly rolled stacks of hay strewn about. Low houses and children running from them to wave at us. For them and for us, these two massive balloons gliding across the sky present a grand spectacle. How long have you been doing this one? Flying balloon, 25 years. Uh, all over the world I take it, eh? All over the world. But I think 50 different countries. 50? Quite chose. Yeah. And how long in India now? India I stay from uh, October. Because the season is from October till end of April. But that oh. came last year as well. Last year we did a few uh, balloon festivals in Lucknow and Hyderabad. Oh. And uh, in the south of India, with some air festival in Tamil Nadu. Oh, fantastic. Uh, but then it came only half the season. And uh, this year I stayed the whole season. So would you have, like fly from here to Tamil Nadu now? No. <laughs> no. no that doesn't Can be. <laughs> takes a long time. And you have to, go, you have to need a good wind. <laughs> Captain Wout Bakker is an old hand at flying these magnificent airships and makes a living moving from one place to another, staying as long as the weather and winds are conducive to flying balloons. I'm envious of his life. The answer, my friend, if you ask Wout, is definitely blowing in the wind. Well, the most funny thing to fly, I will show you a picture later. There's one German company, they have uh, a balloon that flies upside down. It's, a, it's not real, but if you see it flying, it's a, the fire is flying upside down. But the top basket is not a real basket. <laughs> it's made from fabric. And the real basket is in, under, in the balloon a little bit, so you cannot see it. <laughs> yeah, it's a German, it's Festo company. It's very, very nice to fly that balloon. But, but uh, like in the US, if you fly that balloon in the US, we call 911 first. Because we tell the people, if anybody calls for, for a balloon accident, yeah. they want something upside down inverted. <laughs> it's just supposed to be like that. Just don't react on it and we will call you back after we land. We test those straight through the field. Just cross it up. Okay, soft landing! <laughs> keep, a, keep an eye on Paco. Move, Mites, move the mask a little bit more there. We're in a small hamlet in Rajasthan called Samod, an hour's driving time from Jaipur. It might be small, but like all erstwhile princely states in Rajasthan, Samod has a palace. And obviously, every palace has to have its own fleet of vintage cars. The cars in Samod Palace's garage don't just look good. These have been restored to be completely operational and I know this because I've heard of these cars before from the man who's restored them to their former glory. And he's worked on most of the vintage cars that you see in Rajasthan. Hello, I'm Anshu. Good, 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 good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? All well. Welcome, Bariya. Uncle, I'm Miraj. How are you? This Meet. is my friend, Yuhan. Hello, Yuhan. Yeah. How are you? Hi, Yuhan. How are you doing? Good to see you. Uncle, I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> I mean, I called him Anshu. I saw some of his cars. We saw some of his cars at Samod Palace. And yeah. I said, well, you know, he's, he's an arty guy, but it's his dad. I know. <laughs> Who's, I know. Who I does the restorations? And, and he, told me, he told me you had this E-type standing and obviously, I mean, when I heard that, we had to come and see you. Know? I met Himanshu Jangid a couple of years back at the Z Jaipur Literature Festival, where he'd set up a display for Cartist, this art and automobile initiative that he set up. Over the years, Cartist has become a popular event drawing automobile enthusiasts and artists alike. What I'm interested in this time, though, is spending more time looking at the excellent work that his workshop, United Restorations, does on vintage cars. With Cartist taking up most of his time, it's Himanshu's father, Satish Jangid, who runs the show here. Uncle, I want your inputs on this car. This is the car please, I want please. to know everything about. I, I mean, I know as much as I, I do. I, I love this car, you know. The E-Type I love. Well, that's something both of us share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Series 1, man. Series 1. Series 1, they have this, this chassis, you know. 
this is that subframe which sub is bolted e onto the monocoque. Monocoque. Ah. So this is get a less vibration on the engine because this is the monocoque body. Right. Then they put the subframe on this. Nowadays, in the latest, all the cars they have the subframes. Right, right, right. But so this is the first that, one. That time they f they make this subframe. So how lovely this car. So I will show you the engine also. Achha. It is. You have driven this car? Yes. Achha. So is there a power I, difference between the 3.8 and the 4.2, yeah, or is it just but, a torque but, difference? Torque difference means that you have the feel of the car. So it's just like a puppy right now, you know. <laughs> no, because what I believe was that there was not too much power difference, but there was a significant this torque difference. Torque, torque difference, you feel oh, it has the more power. Yeah. Uh, if you rip up the car gee. and it has the more horsepower and more right. you feel oh my God, does it. There is one car. I give a little example on between. Right. There is one car come Toyota. Huh? Which one? Yeah. We're going to walk around, Uncle. I want yeah, to look yeah. at these cars also. Ab, tell me, which car from Toyota are you talking about? It is a um, Mark II. Mark II. Toyota. Ha. Uh, sports. Two seater. If you rip up that car, you feel that your seat is going out. Oh, that much torque, you mean? Torque. Mean. That it, much torque. Yeah. Oh, like it's that twisting motion, no? Motion. It can actually twist the chassis. So, yes, too yes. Much of it. The yeah? same with really? it. If you come, we I will complete it, then I give you the trial for this. Uncle, we you can't feel. wait. We'll come back yeah. for it, huh? For sure. <laughs> we feel. can't back to Jaipur no matter what. <laughs> then you feel it on this. Yeah. Oh, let's have a look inside. Yeah. Look at this red leather. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's actually quite a small this, cockpit. This car is a very good car, but it's screwed very badly. Oh, really? Why would somebody not they look after something like this? They put the Mercedes gearbox on this. It's got a Mercedes gearbox. Oh. Well, so this is the drop head. Drop head. That's the fixed head. Fixed head. Achha, okay. This was the one that actually commands a lot of pricing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This would be like half a million dollars. Yes. See, there is hardly any space to sit in it because apparently no. legend all, has it. All the cars, sports cars. No, legend has it that the guy, the guy who, one of the guys who designed the cars was a very short guy. Yes. Oh my God! Oh, it has that original dash also. Yes. ये चला गया था ना दो साल के बाद। हाँ। ये वो लेदर आ गया था यहाँ पे। लेदर आ गया। हाँ। With these, what are these switches called? These aircraft style switches? हाँ। Aircraft, easy easy switches. Like a James Bond. The it is the it is the it is the James Bond car that was never a James Bond car. Yeah. James Bond never had this car, but this car was a Madman. 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 Madman में थी ये। Uncle, the view from here is something else. It's like aircraft. This car. Oof. And that's also not, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit of a geek about this car, but <laughs> the guy who built this car, you know, you think that he will make a pencil? No. He did, he was, a, he, was a, he was a guy who did his apprenticeship at, a, uh, at an aviation company. Yeah. And like, he He's built a, planes. Aviation guy. Yeah. Oh, all right. Super so, I, want to, I want to take a selfie. Give me a phone. Did you take a picture? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Uncle, I'm having a fanboy moment, Uncle. And just hey. the fact that you've driven these things hey. is making me incredibly jealous right now. Oh, wow. We will I take, think let us complete it. We will go to the Amir. Then you shoot there. Yeah. Uncle, if I can, uh, if I can get one of these in my lifetime, I have arrived. I don't want a house <laughs> in my life. I don't want any of those things. Yeah, yeah. A house, a wife, a family, nothing. I just want one e need, one need. Thodi si original now, toh bhi chale. The Jaguar E-Type is in my mind undoubtedly the prettiest car ever made. A perfect marriage, as it were, between form and function. This thing looked like a million bucks. In fact, rare specimens today would cost more than that, and went like the wind when it was introduced. I'd never seen one up close before. The Jag will take some time to be roadworthy, and Satish has promised to let me know so I can come back and take a ride in it. It's been a thrilling morning. For a gearhead, there really is nothing better than to potter around in a workshop. There's a 1962 Volkswagen Beetle that was recently restored at the workshop, which is in for a routine check. Johan and I are fanboys and have invited ourselves over again tomorrow morning to take a spin in it. Himanshu is terrified at the prospect of letting us take the car, and he's offered to drive us around instead. So, so this this upholstery. Pattern, pattern. Right? Yeah, that's the original Volkswagen upholstery for the Beetle right. for this era, and we import this for America. Import the upholstery? Yeah, just the cloth because you don't get this cloth in India. You don't, huh? Yeah? It's, it's a very cloth. difficult, very difficult to find. And the color is the original color, or you guys painted it? Uh, uh, that that was the original color. Uh -huh. 
for the car and so we kept on to the original team. Okay. It's just a few hours from Delhi, but Jaipur seems a world away from gentrified Delhi. There's a sense of regional pride that's reflected in the way people dress here. The buildings hark back, not the typical colonial era that you see in Lutian's Delhi, but to the inimitable Rajputana style of architecture. Rajasthan's heritage is not in museums, but alive and kicking. No wonder people from all over the world flock to this Indian state. I came across an article talking about a man using a large format camera on the streets in Jaipur. It wasn't hard to find Thikam Chand. He's out there canvassing customers with some gusto. You also like photo? The old camera, 1860 camera. The pictures he takes may be black and white, but Thikam Chand is certainly a colorful character. So it looks like this a big is a box. box camera. Yeah. This is Jaipur Haritage Mint camera. That's cool. So the photos turn out like yeah, the Yeah, yeah, there's a photo. Wow, that's a huge film, huh? So this is uh, this is the negative. No, this positive. Uh, uh, negative, another more negative, positive. This is negative. Oh. So this is what you shoot with the camera, and then you develop it into this one. Also, a dark room developer fixer also. So Wait, you have a full dark room? Yeah, here? yeah. <laughs> here's the seat. Oh wow! You see, you see that? Wow, that looks really cool. Is it cool, upside huh? down? Yeah, upside down. Yeah, the dark. Yeah, that's good... Mirage, turn yeah. around. You're upside yeah. down. Sit <laughs> back. That's a good frame. Sit, sit. We get a picture. A third-generation snapper, Tikam uses the same 150-year-old camera that he inherited from his grandfather. With possibly the oldest Carl Zeiss lens still in operation, this one-of-a-kind relic is a camera and a developing studio all rolled into one. The process of producing a photograph by Tikam involved us posing under his strict guidance and direction. He then stepped behind the camera to put the black fabric over his head to shield out the stray light from the bright Rajasthan sun. After which he glanced briefly to the sky to let him know just how much light was there in the scene. It turns out that Tikam has his own built-in light meter. When it was time to take the photograph, he set the aperture on this ancient German lens. Then in an almost theatrical gesture, he opened the shutter, which, if your camera is 150 years old, only means taking off the lens cap. After a few short moments, Tikam swiftly put the lens cap back on. By now, his wealth of experience had told him that a good exposure had been made. That was... What was that? A two-second exposure? Two-second exposure? Now, I've learned how to develop photos in a dark room, but to see Tikam develop these photos inside this box-like camera on a sunny street in Rajasthan was absolutely fascinating. One of my favorite bits of his lively act was when he mixed up the chemical solutions for the photos and he took by rule of thumb a rehearsed amount of silver nitrate and other ingredients and declared his concoction Photo Masala. This is developer. This developer and the five chemical. The five five chemical. The five chemical. Yeah, silver nitrate. And then this is the silver nitrate. This developer silver nitrate. And then Indian name on the photo masala. Photo masala. <laughs> he was saying that the different chemicals he put into the mix affected the turnout of the photos by means of contrast, clarity, sharpness, shadows, and so on, like the ancestor of Photoshop. Now I think that might need to be taken with a grain of salt after seeing what the photos actually looked like by those metrics after he was finished developing the photos, but it is nonetheless a great souvenir which isn't exactly mass produced. Okay, Nikami, thank you. After chatting so much about photography, I've been itching to use my camera. The gorgeous Hava Mahal is next door and makes for a perfect background for a time lapse. Now, if I only could find the perfect vantage point. Mirage hates doing the touristy thing, but I've never been to Jaipur and I'm not leaving without seeing some of it. 
So in the interest of doing things differently, I've spoken to some guys who take people on Segway tours around the city. It's not the same thing as walking about, but so much better than being in a car. Namaste, welcome. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, how are you feeling? Very good, very good. good. It's quite fun to be on these, yeah. Yeah, you fun yeah. to be on this. Yeah. Okay, but be careful. Yes. Okay, yes. because sometimes if you have a good break, good horn and good luck with you, that's good. Otherwise, awesome. oh la la. Oh la la. <laughs> oh la la, right. Okay, so uh, we are going to see this beautiful city, Jaipur, but I give this name. That's what we call Joypur. So we are going in Jaipur to do the joy, right? You like it? Sounds good? Yeah. Okay, Sounds shall we now? Yeah. Ready to go? Come, come. Okay, so that wasn't the most perfect idea. Riding a Segway is one thing, and doing that on the crowded streets of Jaipur is quite another. If the adrenaline wasn't enough, we got a sugar rush at the end of our tour at Sahuki Chai. This legendary tea vendor is an institution in Jaipur. There's the chai. Thank you. This restaurant was set up by Barbara, who's half Italian, half Swiss, and lives in India. After living in India for years, it was her love for food that inspired her to open up a restaurant, so that she would have access to the great Italian dishes she craved from back home. Dishes such as ricotta appetizers, risotto mains, and meringue desserts is something Palladio can execute with precision. But leaving the food aside, this restaurant's decor is perhaps the biggest wow factor of all. It is like a combination of Mediterranean and Rajasthani influences, which leaves you wondering where and why you feel so familiar admiring the color schemes and interiors here. Oh, look at this place, yeah? Huh? Wow. Hey. Will. Yes. Hi, I'm Miraj. Nice to meet you. Ditto. We had a chat with Will Mulford, who's been living in Jaipur for years and works for Barbara at Bar Palladio. Yeah, it's a Mughal paradise in Jaipur. Mughal paradise, no less. He introduced us to their signature drink, an iced tea, and told stories of how Palladio has become like a hub in its own right, where people of often similar arty interests congregate, as Jaipur really is a city full of artists and creativity. We've trained all of our staff, they're all from Jaipur, all of our chefs, in cooking classic Italian cuisine. Wow. So what Bar Palladio means is that it's truly classic food. So it means your pasta will be al dente, it means your ravioli is made by hand, it means... You make your own pasta, yeah? yeah we make all oh, of our really? own pastas here. Oh, wow. And then Barbara herself is a big foodie, and then she has lots of friends who are f food lovers or great sure. cooks. So what it is, is that kitchen is, has always been kind of an open kitchen, so it means like friends of hers will come, teach new dishes to our staff, so then we'll have... It's not that the menu is constantly changing, but we'll right. update it to say, Ah, this is like a fish dish that's, you know, very particular to Sardinia or to Puglia or to whatever region in Italy. And it's been cooked by friends. So the feeling is, is that the kitchen... One thing that Bar Palladio is, is that it should never feel like something for... It's very beautiful, but it should never feel something formal. Are there any formal Italian restaurants? Or is that an oxymoron? I don't think so, actually. No, I rather do I. There's just nice ones. The thing is, is that we were really tired of eating, and so Barbara... She wanted to eat food, like real food, real Italian food, not like pink sauce pasta that's ah, overcooked. Right, yeah. sure. Or right. like a disgusting salad that has a bunch of dressing on top of it. Or you like know? a pizza that's only a chapati with Ex ketchup on yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's really not cool. Yeah. Like, exactly. It's not a pizza. It's not a pizza. I mean, it's a disgusting. Yeah. So she made actually Bar Palladio so that she could eat food. So she 
created this entire I'm, world. I'm sure it was more than that. She could have just hired a great chef. She could have, but she yeah. didn't. How long have you been here? Since in India, since seven years. And but you're not Italian. No, I'm American. You're American. I'm American Italian. It's, it's all right. Yeah, I know. It's all good. I know. <laughs> no, but I went to Italy for the first time three, two years ago for work to like experience the taste. Because <laughs> I was like, I would offer suggestions for the food. Like, oh, let's have chicken and pasta. Like, because that's good. And then Barbara would be like, oh, that's disgusting, that's disgusting, no, no, no. So then I had to, I had to have like an education. And our worst customers are Italians because they really? always want to have the food that their mother has cooked them. Oh God. Or it should be like perfect. So then if there's one issue, they're like, hey, oh, no, 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 no. And then if it's really good, they're like, oh, wow, it's delicious. It's like oh, mama's cooking. Hey, oh, oh, oh. So, it's fun. There's always yeah, it's so never like it's not even funny. It's not even funny. Like Italian men are equally spoiled by their mothers. I'm serious. <laughs> they really. I'm I serious. think aren't I'm Indian men as well. <laughs> That's the interesting thing of India and Italy. They're very similar. This is, yummy. is it good? This is our most best-selling dessert. It's, it's absolutely yummy. Yeah. So we have as well. Our desserts are all born from the ideas of a mad English pastry. Chef. He's not a pastry chef, he's like a designer who loves mm. to make pastries. You know. So he does blood printing and then on the side. That's why it's like such a good looking pastries. dessert, yeah. Yeah, he's really as amazing. Like so he does croissants, he does But see this kind of dessert you just don't get in India. No. Like this is very easy. You could get it at a five star. So what Come we... on, a meringue like this? No, it's very rare, yeah. Rajasthan is a paradise actually for Indian sweets. And I've been eating a lot of them. So we might start doing some tests. No, don't do it. Just stick to Italian desserts. Good, okay. Then we'll keep that. How long have you been here? In Jaipur? Huh? Oh, I've been here for four years. So yeah. I came initially for a study of Hindi. It's for the study of Hindi? Yeah. Why? I was just, just, I always wanted to live in India. It was like my dream. And you want and to study Hindi? No, I just knew if I lived here, then I wanted to be fluent in the language. Bar Palladio really gets going in the evening with locals as well as visitors who've come here from all around the world. And as it turned out, a great last place to see before leaving the Pink City. The ruins of the walled city of Bangard are hauntingly beautiful. Okay, so that's a bad pun. But when the day's light pales and the shadows grow longer, the peacock calls grow louder and the wind whistles through the abandoned buildings, this deserted complex acquires a decidedly eerie feel. It doesn't help that even the Archaeological Survey of India has put up a board at the entrance prohibiting entry from dusk to dawn. Wow, oh, it's gorgeous, huh? We should get some pictures. Might, might have been once. <laughs> I don't know how gorgeous it is now. Johan and I didn't really get spooked. Bhangard of late has been cleaned up and better maintained than I expected it to be. There are manicured gardens and even a drone flying about to keep a watch on visitors. But I can just imagine how it would be on a grey day, a cold breeze blowing and scattered leaves rustling under the footsteps of visitors. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not here between dusk and dawn. It's been a great hit and run trip to Rajasthan. Hopefully we'll be back in winter, we'll explore Jaisalmer, Bikaner and towns further afield. Right now though, with the summer months right around the corner, it's time to retreat to Delhi and plot our next escape back to the hills. I keep my rhythm slow, I move my head, I move my hand to the tempo. 